Imagine a vast expanse of sky high above the Nevada desert. Two incredible machines of war are closing in on each other. One is a ghost, a near-invisible predator packed with the most advanced and expensive technology the world has ever seen. This is the American F-35 Lightning II, the undisputed king of the modern battlefield. Its opponent is a nimble, dart-like fighter from the cold north of Sweden. Smaller, lighter, seems almost outmatched on paper. This is the Saab Gripen. In this titanic clash, a modern-day David and Goliath story unfolds, not with slingshots and stones, but with radar, missiles, and the sheer skill of the pilots strapped inside. Let's meet our two combatants, two jets in silhouette, map showing Jus versus Sweden. In one corner, the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, born from the Joint Strike Fighter Program. The goal, one stealthy multi-role fighter, serve the Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, Allied Nations too, designed to do everything, air-to-air -air combat, ground attack, intelligence gathering, electronic warfare, reputation, incredible stealth capabilities, a powerful network of sensors giving the pilot an unparalleled view. In the other corner, the Saab JS-39 Gripen, the name itself tells you its story, fighter, attack, reconnaissance. From its inception the Gripen was built for a unique defensive posture. Sweden, long history of neutrality. They needed a jet that could do it all and do it cheaply, operating from dispersed improvised airbases. It's a story of smart design versus sheer financial might. The outcome is far from decided which jet truly rules the skies. What makes the Gripen so special? It's not one single feature, but a combination of design choices, operative till ganglige, operational availability, is at its core. Not just how well it flies, but how often it can be ready to fly. Engineered for incredible ease of maintenance, a full team of just one technician, five conscripts, can refuel, rearm, turn the aircraft around, all in 10 minutes. A few Gripens can generate the sorties of many maintenance-heavy jets. Cost-effectiveness is key, the F-35's eye-watering price tag is well known. The Gripen is famously frugal. Pilots can afford to fly more, train more, become true masters. An ace in a very good jet beats an average pilot in a supposedly superior one. Nations can field credible air forces without bankruptcy. To understand the Gripen's achievement, we must give its rival its due. The F-35 Lightning II is, in many respects, the most capable combat aircraft ever built. Its primary strength, and the very reason for its existence, is stealth. Its shape, materials, coatings, all designed to absorb and deflect radar waves, giving it a radar cross-section reportedly the size of a golf ball. This allows it to penetrate deep into heavily defended enemy airspace. Beyond stealth, the F-35's other trump card is its sensor fusion. Radar, infrared, signal detectors, all feeding a single picture. This information is shared across a secure network. The F-35 becomes a flying command and control center. The pilot's helmet even allows them to look through the floor of the aircraft. However, this complexity has come at a price. Delays, cost overruns, technical challenges. Stealth coatings are delicate and need constant care. Availability rates can be lower than simpler aircraft. While the F-35 is incredibly capable when flying, getting it into the air is far more demanding than for a fighter like the Gripen. War games and military exercises provide the closest thing we have to real-world data. Pilots and machines are pushed to their absolute limits. One famous arena is Red Flag over Nevada. Direct, one-on-one -on -one comparisons are often classified, but details and pilot testimonies have leaked out. In several exercises, Gripens, often as aggressors, have reportedly given Blue Air F-35S a very tough time. The key seems to be the Gripen's electronic warfare capability. The F-35 relies on stealth to get close and its powerful radar to see first. The Gripen's strategy is to counter this by blinding the F-35 sensors, creating a wall of electronic static. Make radar lose clean lock, create false targets, hide in electronic noise. At the same time, passive iris sensors let the Gripen find the F-35 without revealing its own position. Tactics one plane as bait to trigger radar, other Gripens triangulate, then launch long-range Meteor missiles. The Meteor's ramjet gives little reaction time. To truly understand the Gripen, one must understand the country that built it. Sweden's defense doctrine is not about projecting power, it's about making invasion so costly it never happens. 
With vast forests and a long coastline, Sweden relies on dispersal and asymmetric warfare. The requirement to operate from 800-meter road strips was a core design principle, the BAS-90 system. In crisis, fighter squadrons scatter across pre-planned road strips, operating from hundreds of dispersed locations. That makes finding and destroying the Swedish Air Force on the ground incredibly difficult. Simple maintenance needs and rapid turnaround are essential, enabling high sortie tempo from austere sites. This contrasts with air forces that depend on large, well-established bases, high-value targets themselves. Sweden solves the problem by not having traditional bases. Dispersal multiplies survivability. It's a brilliant strategic solution. Survive the initial onslaught, fight back, and raise the cost of invasion. When we place the Gripen and the F-35 side by side, their strengths and weaknesses become clear. In pure kinematics, the Gripen E has a slight edge. Higher top speed, Mach 2. Compared to the F-35's top speed, Mach 1.6. Gripen can supercruise briefly and is generally more agile. Better turn rate, better climb rate. Formidable in within visual range dogfight. The most significant difference is stealth. The F-35 is a true stealth aircraft with a minimal radar signature. The Gripen is not fully stealthy but incorporates low observable features, more accurately low observable. In a head-on engagement, an F-35 will likely detect the Gripen first. That is the F-35's core advantage. But electronics complicate things. The Gripen E's EW suite is designed to counter that advantage. By jamming, deceiving, and disrupting the F-35's radar, the Gripen can shrink detection ranges or burn through stealth. Finally, cost and maintenance, a decisive advantage for the Gripen. More planes, more pilots, more flying hours for the same budget. In sustained conflict, sortie generation matters as much as raw capability. The rivalry between Gripen and F-35 offers profound lessons for future air combat and design. It challenges the belief that air superiority is simply a matter of the most expensive platform. One key takeaway, the importance of electronic warfare and the electromagnetic spectrum is growing. Another, logistics and affordability endure. A jet stuck in a hangar is useless regardless of how advanced it is. The concept of the loyal wingman and drone swarms is a logical evolution of the Gripen philosophy. Distributed, cheaper systems complementing manned fighters. Move away from a single expensive flagship toward a networked, cost-effective force. Don't put all your eggs in one very expensive basket. The Gripen philosophy scaled up suggests a future. Yet the Gripen shows smart, pragmatic design. Dispersal, ease of maintenance, affordability, fast enough, agile enough, stealthy enough, and electronically clever enough to be lethal. The tale of these two jets enriches military aviation and forces air forces to think critically about needs and budgets. The Gripen is David, armed not with a sling, but with electronic warfare and a low cost per flight hour. Innovation and smart design let a small nation build a giant killer.